I mean, I guess there's a lot in Paris, right? It was it was incredible. One thing I did, which was really nice, was uh, went down to the really really old Paris, and that was like a night or two before coming back, and it was, the weather was kind of nice, and just walk around really old Paris, where it's like all these hipsters have kind of set up shop there, mm -hmm. and um, that was one of the best things. I wish I had found that a little earlier in the trip because I was just walking around looking at all these amazing art shops, and it, it was it was incredible. Do you Paris was fucking incredible. Do you have a new appreciation for art? No, I don't care as much about art. That's why I didn't spend a lot of time in the Louvre. I didn't, right. I didn't give a shit. Like, Let me see the famous my... painting. I saw Let me some... see the fucking biggest one you got. Yeah, show, <laughs> show me the fucking, show me the Grand Slam. What's... I'll look at these little dick statues on my way out. Stop having statue dicks hang above the scrotum. <laughs> I was so annoyed. They all have baby dicks. Why? They got little dicks. What are you going to do? <laughs> Chip in. Do you know I did bring, I, I know Chip I should. Chip in I, I should have done this. I brought the chip wig. No. And I didn't do anything with it because I was like, no, I was like, what am I going to hold up myself? I guess I could have, but I just felt stupid leaving the hotel with that. I'm like, where am I going to do it? I just, I didn't. You could have. I brought the chip wig and I just didn't do anything with it. You could have just shot footage of Chip in Paris and then made a parody song called Chip is in Paris. I should have. I just didn't. You, that would have been oh, great, right? Maybe. Would you have produced that, Troy? Oh, in a second. Chip is in Paris? Yes. I, I, did, I, I, I didn't. Again, when you're. It felt silly just to stand there holding up a camera doing I'm, chip by my. I think like, we're not, asking someone <laughs> that went to high school with. Can you hold this up? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what the fuck are you this, doing? This is what I do now. Yeah, this is how I make my living. Yeah, I, I don't mind doing it in front of people who know, but in front of people who don't, it's humiliating. I also like that you didn't do work stuff. That you just. As Jim Norton, as a man, yeah, I just, just enjoyed the Eiffel Tower. That would have been more. Oh, dude, I thought of being chipped the whole, like the, the, <laughs> the amount of time I, I could have enjoyed uh, him just being around. I, again, I thought was of it you. Hard? What's that? Was it hard? Yeah, because you talk. I talk like that to myself. But you start thinking <laughs> this of like is what like Clark Kent goes through when he can't be Superman. Right, Superman's it, it, only in America. You can't. You can go to Paris, Clark, and you can see the all the sights, yes. but you cannot be Superman. He's just got to keep the costume under his clothes. Yes, I mean, somebody I, needs my help. I'm walking by phone booth after phone booth. I can't change. I see down the street, Lois Lane is getting her cunt kicked in. <laughs> and I can't help her. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, God damn it! I want to help. But, I, but the security is so much, it'd be hard to sneak in the cameras. But I just thought of the amount of questions. Dur I, during the fucking uh, the tour of Versailles, the uh. amount of questions he could have asked, the annoyance um, to other people. Would you, do you think anybody, like, all those people lined up trying to look at the Mona Lisa, everybody standing on top of each other, do you think that they would have been happy if Chip was trying going up to as many people as possible and asking them if they saw how fucking big the painting on the other yeah. side was? Why is it so small? <laughs> how come it's so small? <laughs> oh, the painting's so fucking big. It's so fucking big. Yeah. I painted a picture like that. <laughs> I, believe me. I, I thought of it the whole time I was there, just how much fun it would have been. But it's not fun just to do chip, just, you know, with myself or a tour guide who would have thought I was fucking... You uh, need to have uh, somebody there, like, just knowing that at least somebody gets it. Somebody who's into chip. Right. You know, you know what I mean? Just, again, doing it with people who don't fucking give a shit about chip, it would have been just stupid and humiliating. So that means you were over there for Christmas, too. Yeah. And did you do anything for Christmas, or you're not a Christmas Dinner. person? Dinner. Just yeah. dinner, you know what I mean? You fucking call home, talk to the rents. Did you talk to the rents on yeah, Xmas? You, you call home. Hey, rents, it's my Xmas call. Yeah, I, I didn't mind though. It was, it was a, it was a, it was fun, man. I was because the whole time I realized I'm like, this is the shit you should have been doing before. Right. But you didn't. Well, you're at a point in life where you can actually appreciate it now. You've accomplished some things. You've made some money. You can do this stuff. Yeah, you don't feel like I. I didn't feel like I was like because uh, I don't. I don't do stuff like that. Right. So it was. It was again. It was expensive. It's an expensive city. But I'm like, fuck it, man. Like I, I don't waste money on stuff like this. But this is also one of the first times in your life that you aren't sitting there like. Probably, I wouldn't imagine you're sitting there going like, oh, I gotta, I gotta do this. I gotta, I should be doing this. I should be doing that. Like when you were even a few years younger. You'd be worried about not doing enough for your career or whatever while you were there. I was obsessed with that, but but I, the reason I wasn't obsessed with it is because we looked around for New Year's Eve gigs, and there were some available, mm -hmm. but there was nothing that would have paid more than the tourists paying. Like, it was just, there was regular gigs. Sure. And I'm like, I've been working every fucking weekend, and I'm starting work again the 19th. I'm like, just go away, you fucking jerk off. Shut let, up. Let me go be a chip in Paris. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't do it. I just couldn't. Again, you feel silly just holding up. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. So we pre-recorded the Christmas and New Year special, and people enjoyed those. I yeah. Think. 
It, it was amazing. Uh, amazing, and I came home. I love it. And I came home, and I hadn't and then slept. You're, yeah, and, that, and then you come home. Fly home. I'm, I'm, I'm dozed off on the plane. Amazing. The flight, American Airlines flight, incredible. First, business? Business, yeah. Business. No, first, first is fucking, you know. How much, okay, so if a business class, because, I don't know, you know, I'm steerage Sammy. But if, if business it's class. Okay, I was fucking, I was the coach kid for the first. <laughs> oh, I know. For the first 15. <laughs> if, if business class is seven. First of all, what's the difference between business and coach? Um, it, it's a big difference between it business and coach. It, the bigger seat, it's a live flat seat. The food is a lot better. Probably on a flight like that too, on a cross continental flight. It's it's a difference. Business and first, the seats are a little bit bigger. There's not as much difference between business and first. I mean, again, international first. I, I don't think I've ever done that. Those are like that's just astronomical. I wouldn't. So how much does a, if a if a business class costs seven thousand dollars for a flight? I've never priced what? them. I'm gonna guess. I'm going to guess they can be 12 or 15 grand. Oh my I mean, it, it's, God. It's, it's astronomical. But again, to do something like that, you can, you can get them cheaper or you can go with uh, upgrade with miles. There's ways to buy things and upgrade with miles, and that's at a peak time of the year. Yeah. I, I would never. I've never. I couldn't spend thousands of dollars. But on, so, so you take your nice. Uh, like you, sorry, you make less money. Yeah. Like when I did Australia, when I did London, I didn't make that much money doing those gigs at all because a part of your your air, your airline buyout is is a bigger buyout, mm -hmm. so the gig money pays a lot less. Right. So you like I I kind of made nothing doing London and doing Australia, but I just wanted to see those places. Yeah, and I mean, and and there so you're is, getting paid to go somewhere. There is merit to like you know this, I'm I'm traveling internationally. Just to go see, to see these see places, this, yeah, yeah. I mean, totally. that, that was the main reason for doing those. So there was not a lot of money to be made. I didn't make a lot of money when I did London. I just wanted to finally go over there and, and do the gigs. And, and you kind of break even or you make a, you know, a little bit after. But it's honestly nothing like you would have made if you just stayed home. Right. But it's, who cares? If you you're stay home, you don't, you're gonna, you don't get to see Big Ben. I didn't see Big Ben anyway. What? Ah, fuck Big Ben. <laughs> it's a big clock. It is a big if clock. Like, if you like that painting in the Louvre, wait till you see Big Ben. It's fucking huge. Then you look at the other side, there's a much bigger clock. <laughs> yeah. <Blah>. Do you? <laughs> but but I, I, I came home Gossipy after this. clock. <laughs> <laughs> I, I came home and it was just this amazing trip. And I, you know, again, the day you come back, you're just kind of situated. I didn't have a, a, any sets. I'm like, I'll start doing my sets again during the midweek. Because um, I wanted to just kind of relax. And I wasn't feeling great because of the flight. So I go to bed and it's like maybe it's two o'clock in the morning because again you're on fucking. Flip and this down. was two Monday, Monday night. night, and it's like it's I'm laying in bed I'm just about to doze off, and I hear like. <laughs> I thought one of my fucking windows blew in. It was a, a, a bizarre. Metal creaking. Now you know nobody's breaking in because you uh, got floodlight cams on your patio. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, is that? It was it was a giant boom, and then I walk down my hallway, and I hear like, I hear a rattling, and I'm like, the building's collapsing. <laughs> something, <laughs> something bad is happening, and uh, let me see here. What was happening? Um, let me see if there's a way to to tell you without actually saying it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there is. Here. Let's see. I, I should have... Uh... I woke up to the sound of some type of a burst. And you can see... This is all flooded. What? There's water all over your floor. These are all... Listen to those puddles. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can get that puddle sound is so satisfying. It was a, a burst pipe. A burst pipe. In and your bathroom? Uh, no, it was between the wall and the outside. Uh huh. It wasn't in the bathroom. It was in. It was an outside because the, 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 it froze. The pipe froze and burst. And it's. I'm trying. How do, I'm trying to describe the sound without sounding stupid. It sounded like a like a big King Kong monster had taken the building and squeezed it like a potato. Perfect. Because <laughs> King Kong. Oh, this monster keeps squeezing all our potatoes. But when you when, when you think of things that are being squeezed, it's, it's potatoes. potatoes usually. <laughs> You gotta squeeze it a little to make sure it's ripe. But behind the wall, <laughs> behind the wall connecting to the outside, you, you, you can hear, when I'm walking around, you can hear it vaguely. You can hear the water. Let me see if we can hear it. Wait, I'm talking, this is for insurance reasons. Of course. Wait, wait. Can you hear it like, shh? Sure. That sound in the back it sounds, sounds like a like waterfall. Somebody squeezing a potato. Yes, yeah, so what's the liquid <laughs> yeah, coming from a potato? That's right. That that shh 
in the background. That's water still going down the wall on the inside. I was walking around, and I, I didn't hear anything, and then I found water, and I'm like... On I your floor. A, I thought a window blew in or something. And I now understand why animals right. panic, because I was just running around on my floor, and I'm going, oh, no, water, oh, no, no, what, no, oh, no. Like, you don't know what to do. I'm in my underwear. I haven't slept. I'm barefoot. It's ice water. So you're delirious as it is, because you're jet lagged. I'm you fucking, haven't slept. I vomited the night. Less than 24 hours before, I was fucking vomiting. You were sick. You are in a different country. You don't know how to fix shit in your house anyway. So, like, you're sitting there, there's water on your floor, and you're just kind of run pacing around the apartment. And I'm like, it's, <laughs> saying, oh, no. it's New Year's night. So I call down to the front desk, and we do- How much water? A decent amount. Like I'd, an inch? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. The only good thing was- It's a water bomb. Was that I heard, was that I was home and I heard it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the only saving grace is that, like, I, I happened to be there. Because I called downstairs, I'm talking to, to the front desk guy, and I'm like, ah, oh, you got to is there, there's no maintenance guys at night. And I, I, I call the super, and he's like, okay, because he didn't know what to do. He was kind of new. But but there was, uh, he did, he's like, I can't get a hold of him. And I'm like, dude, my fucking apartment is flooding. <laughs> like, How many rooms? Um, well, in the end, it was two. But you literally, when your apartment is flooding. Did you have any panic in your voice? You don't, you, because you can't stop water. Right. Water is coming, <laughs> and I can't stop it. Holy fuck, it's, is water scary. It's on the inside of the house. It's usually on the outside. Now it's on the inside. Dude, you just think of everything you've worked for being ruined and, and, and like, spo like my and photos. You have hardwood floors. I have hardwood floors. Are, you, is your, are your boxes of mementos waterproofed? Um, you know, a, a couple of them are, okay, and it was good. in my bedroom, and I was laying down towels, which literally, it would have been just as effective mm -hmm. if I took contact lenses and threw them <laughs> in the water. <laughs> it was fucking pouring in. So my super is great, because I call, I have a cell, and I called him, and he, he finally texted me like five minutes later. This whole thing was happening for like ten minutes. And he's like, and okay, two in was the it a long ten minutes? Dude, it was a long, picture having your, your dick... Uh, <laughs> caught in a door that's been slept for ten minutes. So he I comes. This up, happened to me last year. The flooding. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant the dick thing. No, yeah. a, a pipe burst in our bathroom overnight. Stop slamming and the it, door it, on. Jim's it. right. It's it's the it's. Dude, you feel like don't you, you understand no like water, 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 yeah. water. It's helplessness. Water. Yeah. You don't know what to do. Your shit is being flooded. So the super comes up, and apparently there's a shutoff valve for that. Um, that particular line because it goes to an outside hose, uh, but no one knew where it was. It's different in the different apartments. So he ran downstairs. Meanwhile, they had called the before he got the super. The guy called the fire department. He just didn't know what to do at the front desk. So before the super comes up, I'm standing there and the doorbell rings. Seven firemen are there with axes <laughs> and fucking two cops, and they walk in and. <laughs> Luckily, I had to unplug all my shit. Like nothing. Thank God, I I unplugged it. Like as the water was coming in. As you're speaking in my mind's eye, you're still in your underpants. <laughs> was I in my underwear? No, I had a pair of. Uh, no, I threw jeans on and I rolled up the legs. I, oh, I have a, a. Oh no, you didn't. Well, like uh, Huck Finn. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what I was saying. Is, uh, I was referring to my my friend as uh, one of the same things. Hold hold on, this is you upside. A, you had your 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 jeans rolled up and a piece of straw Wait, hanging out of your mouth. See if you can see this again. This is all for insurance. So, see if you can see my feet. Wait, watch. Think something burst. Uh, look. Oh my <laughs> God! Do you see my uh, feet? You running? rolled your you rolled your jeans up into capris. Yeah. Wait. Look. See. Look. What a loser. Burst. <laughs> How bad is that? High waters. Big, yeah, big manly firemen come in and cops, and you've got your high water jeans rolled up. We, we, you don't know where the water's coming from at first because it's coming from under. There's no hole in the wall. Sure. So you don't know if it's an outside thing or if it's an inside thing. And then I, the firemen came in and they're standing with axes. There's two cops behind them. Right. And literally, they, then the super came up when they were there, and they're like, okay, we think it's coming from behind the wall. You could hear. Then you realize what that noise was. That was the water flowing. Um, and the firemen literally as I'm standing there, they're like, all right, let's go. I'm like, I thought they were going to help me clean up and move the bed and get the water out of there. They, they literally were looking at me like they walked in and I had on heels <laughs> and I was going, oh boys, my tootsies are cold. <laughs> they couldn't have hated me more. I, I didn't, I didn't know what to do. I didn't call them. The guy downstairs just didn't know what to do. 
They so like, thank God, sir, this, we could have taken care of this with a wet vac. Do they would have axed it and and uh, and then just showed us where it was in the wall? But the super was great. He ran downstairs to the basement and he shut down the whole line of the building on that side. And then um, that kind of stopped the bleeding. And then he brought up these vacuum things. But people downstairs got fucked up. Nothing you can do. I mean, it's just it was a it was so cold. It's record breaking cold that uh, the pipes once in a while burst. And they said that the the uh, buildings have had these things like I called the insurance people the next day, and like it's the most common thing we're getting. I mean, right. everyone's building's having fucking pipes explode. I'd be in such shit if I get burst pipes in my house. But you realize, like, you got a plan for that. You should get a, one of those vacs that sucks up the water. Wet vac. And, and find out where your shutoff valves are. Yeah, I um, know where my shutoff valves are. And we got the sub pump. But if it's in, but by the way, if it's an inside valve, like not that line, there was no shutoff valve for it. It's just the main one in the basement. So it's it's a whole thing, but you realize how helpless you are. Like, thank God it wasn't fire, and thank God it, if it was twenty four hours before. How helpless you are it, in uh, toe deep water. Just what? No, but like you can't stop it from coming. Mm -hmm. So it fucked up. My bedroom is totally like I have to have all the wood done, redone just because of mold. But insurance will take care of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, again, it's one of those things that you have homeowners insurance for. And then there, it seeps under the walls into the next room. And so my office, two of my rugs were ruined. But again, it didn't go into the living room. It didn't fuck up. Like it sucked. But I was really lucky I was home. At the end, like, by the end of the night, we had gotten a lot of the water up, and the, the super was great. So it's like, you, yeah, this stinks, but fuck it, I was here. Does your apartment smell musky? No, 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 no. It doesn't, and I don't know why it doesn't, but who knows? Maybe it was just cold water coming down that pipe. But, but again, I have people coming today to look at it and start the floors, and it's going to be a long process. Now they have to fucking rip them up. Do all this mold stuff and then do the next room. It's gonna be a nightmare for the next fucking couple of months. Of when you have wood floors put down, they gotta fucking bring in the wood and let it sit in your apartment for a while to get used to the way the air is, so they don't put it down and it doesn't contract and expand. It's a whole fucking thing these construction workers gotta do. Yeah. So this next like month or two is gonna suck. Yeah. But you realize you you realize, hey man, I'm home and, and so whatever. Yeah, but what if it happens again and you're not? That's true, dude. I couldn't. You don't understand. I, uh, I have not stopped thinking about that. How Every great would it have leave. been? How Do great would it have been if this happened on December twenty sixth? <laughs> oh. Dude, you, <laughs> dude, you really do think <laughs> constantly. No, it wouldn't have been because the people downstairs, like because of where the pipe was, it was just happened to be in the middle of the wall, and a thank God it didn't come through my ceiling. Yeah. Um, Honey, it sounds like someone's squeezing a potato upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> is, 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 the, is the neighbor upstairs squeezing potatoes again? <laughs> but dude, I'm laying in bed, and, and every noise I hear, I'm like, it's flooding! Because they, they had the guy come, and he, and he put in like a, uh, a, a new, a new uh, shutoff valve, and they're putting in a new vent right, where, like, right in my room, like as opposed to in another room where I can just get it, if God forbid. Cause that, because you, you realize like, that po hose to the, that pole to the outside is exposed. But fuck, is that scary? You think about it, right? I, uh, all, every time we leave, we we went up to Montreal for four days, and it's the only thing on my mind while we're driving there is what because uh, all it did was just one random night, a little piece of of the pipe on the toilet burst at like eleven o'clock. I was sleeping. Lisa was out. She came home, and there was just water coming out Wait, everywhere. Is there a shut off on your toilet though? Where you with, uh, the uh, righty tighty, lefty loosey? Yeah, something like that. And she figured it out because like. And it stopped the water. And, and it stopped the water. But we still had an inch of water in almost our entire apartment. Did it, what did you lose? Because you realize how much shit you leave. You don't realize how much of your shit's on the floor <laughs> until water comes in the room. We lost rugs. Uh, we lost a, a few things. Nothing like nothing major. But the fact that all of our electronics. The dogs? No, the dog's there. Oh, yeah, survived? The dog okay. was fine. Good, yeah. thank God. So lost his bed, but we bought him a new one because we love him. Oh, um, okay. But you realize that that shit could happen anytime. Whether you're there or not, and 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 if you're not there, you you could be fucked. And what if it's in another room? Like if it had happened again, what if it's like one of the ones? Because all your fucking water pipes are in your ceiling. So like, what if it happened in the hallway? Oh my god! The first thing I did was when I ran in, I heard it rattling in the wall. And I'm like, okay, there's a problem. Before I even knew there was water, I thought something was going to burst. I went and got my my signed Black Sabbath photo <laughs> off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and I ran into the living room and put it on the sofa. <laughs> that you was the stand on the sofa. Dude, I put it on the sofa before I even realized. Hello, officers, is that you? No, see yourself in. 
you holding it, standing up on the couch, holding his Black Sabbath photo. You'll know me. I'll be in the living room. I'll be the boy holding the signed picture of, <laughs> of four alcoholics. So I, I hey, fucking, you don't understand. It's so hard to get them all together. I, I fucking, I really did. I took my signed Sabbath photo off the wall and ran it because I thought the wall was going to blow in. <laughs> I, I didn't know what it was because the, the pipes were all connected. So when they're rattling, I'm like, the wall's going to cave in. But you realize like, if that happens anywhere and just rains down on your shit. And in a weird way, you have this, you have a weird thing about your possessions when this happens. Like, all right, this sucks. But I'm like, I, I did lose a few signed things that were in a box. Not Again, nothing major, just a few little things. All right. But you realize, like, okay, it is what it is. There's, mm -hmm. like, almost nothing you can do about it. You don't want to lose your computer stuff or all your the things I've written over the years. But I'm like, besides my photos and the things I've written, like that's mostly what I care about on my computer. I'm now completely terrified of uh, of the basement flooding. Dude, you should get you if you got a sump pump or whatever. Yeah, we do. There's got to be an automatic shut off you can put on the floor. I have that for my washer dryer. There's like this automatic shut off where if water leaks, you fucking a switch comes and turns the water off. I wonder if there's ways to get that in every room where if water floods in. Um, because it is scary. If I wasn't home, eventually they would have realized they would have just broken into my apartment and shut it off. Right. They would have just shut the water down. Everything would have been so wet, though. But dude, it would have been. It literally might have been a week of your apartment sitting in water. Probably imagine just coming home to that. I can't. I, yeah. I, so as opposed to being in like, why me? Why me? I'm like fucking lucky. I was here. It, this couldn't have happened at a better time. I was here, and I'm lucky. I was yeah, here. You're lucky. You're home. So That's then you, it. So then you. What time do they finally get finished up there? Well, I was—I I mean, until the next morning, because the guy had to go downstairs and take care of the other sure. people. And so I was just upstairs. Um, he brought up this vacuum, and I was just vacuuming. But I couldn't move the rugs myself because my bed's on them or my sofa's on. So I had to wait for him to come back up. And then we rolled up the rugs, threw them outside Excuse on the terrace. Excuse me, can you help me with the rugs, too? Can you help me, sir? Can you help me? I can't do the rugs by myself. I don't know how to do them. But I moved everything, and then the floor was kind of dry by the end of the night. Like, literally. Um, but so then you were up all day yesterday? I, I dozed off and I got knocks at the door because then the maintenance people had come in and they wanted to do some expecting and blah, blah, blah. And they had to have someone come in and put in a new valve. So I was up all day what until last night. Ass. So last night I'm, I'm in bed by like 8.30 and I didn't fall asleep till 11 because you keep thinking you're hearing creaking pipes. Then you just realize it's just the neighbors squeezing potatoes. That's all it is. Thank God. They're, yeah. they're a giant King Kong monster of some sort. <laughs> they're just squeezing their potatoes. It's not an issue. But I, I'm, it's nice to know that that doesn't go away. No, and it, and it won't. No. What the fear of? Uh, yeah, of because you realize, flooding? like I get, I get trauma now. You know, like on on a, on a small scale, I get it. But don't you? It never leaves. It never leaves your it mind. Does, this it, is it, stolen valor, Travis. Don't <laughs> don't equate this with PTSD. Yeah, right, but it, you understand how little things like you can't shake it. Like uh, the idea of running around in the water helpless. Like I really was just going. Oh no, yeah. water! <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're you're lucky that you have a a super. I mean, I'm assuming I have a you building. have a super, right? You don't own we, your. I mean, we're in a we're in a garden apartment facility, which is like you know just a, a shitload of of two story, ha like townhomes. Yeah. Um. But yeah, we have a maintenance. Yeah, and... I'm supposed to be a man who does his own things. Yeah. Now. Fuck that. I'm never owning a house. I thought I'm of that like rude. how so much it sucks if your house happens. But you're on your own, dude. I called plumber. Yeah. I called three fucking plumbers. One of them is like, ah, maybe in three hours they can text you on the way. And the other one's like, I got nothing till tomorrow. Whoa. That's how, because it was happening all over the city. Because it was so fucking cold that every night they were on call. So even a 24-hour plumber is hard to find. Yeah, Another I would just. Another potato being squeezed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, so it's potato squeezing season. What are we going to do? Yeah, I, uh, I mean, I, water sensors, guys are saying. Yeah. And I know where all my valves are, so I know how to shut the water off in yeah. the house. So you, you have to in the house. That's all I would it's do. It's different in a building, though. Yeah, sure, of course. The only valve... I could have shut off. I was this one, but again, nobody knows where it is. And you don't think, hey, is there different valves, one to an outside water source? Um, but if it happens on the inside, there's no valve. You just, the guy has to go downstairs to the basement and just shut it off. Yeah. So, again, thank God you live in a building where there's a guy who knows what he's doing. Yeah, I mean, nobody's there, but we called the 24-hour line, and some guy that's on call came and, you know, didn't really help. But... How long did it take him to get there? Um, 30, 45 minutes. Yeah, and if you don't know how to shut the water off, that's a long time. We had the water shut off already. Um, but, you know, we still had to clean up the entire Did they apartment. have to redo your floors? N no. Dude, I I'm you, you sure have to they, I'm sure they would. Uh, you should have that redone. Yeah, I mean, we're not in a, in a in a situation like yours where we can just up and leave. Uh, oh, but won't insurance, insurance might cover that. That's what I'm saying, like... Oh, like insurance will cover them staying in a hotel while they fix the floors? <laughs> 
Yeah, I don't, I'm not gonna have to pay for any of it. It's all homeowners insurance or whatever. Or renters insurance. Man. You have no, to. No, that would that wouldn't fall under renters insurance because that would be their issue. What do you mean? Like that would be the 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 landlord's issue. It's, it's theirs. <laughs> yeah, but I think that insurance would what pay. What a story, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I really have no idea. You you should investigate that for health, dude. You get your you 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 don't want you and your wife and your kid breathing in mold. You should really do that, dude. It should be fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she's young. It should, it should be fine. How yeah. long ago? Should be fine. Uh, Six months ago? Yeah, I don't say. These, I, I, these kids and their immune systems, unbelievable. Yeah. They should be fine. Absolutely, you should have a guy come in and check that. All right, maybe. You should absolutely have a fucking mold. You should call it to your landlord. I don't think you'll have to pay for any of it. It was a, a fucked up pipe that, that... Oh, I'm not worried about paying for any of it. Yeah, it's not our... Bro, he's got the cash. He's not worried about <laughs> shit. Dude, you should have somebody come in. I know I should. You know, you, that's really dangerous. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, what a way to end your uh, your spectacular European vacation. VKJ. VKJ. Yeah. <laughs> you like that? I love <laughs> it. That's his, that's his new thing. I like 2018 it too. is the year of VKJ. VKJ rules. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, it was it was a fun. Uh, oh God, there's a fireman rescuing me. <laughs> <laughs> I can believe it. Face on. Yeah. Well, the fireman is smiling at least. So yeah. I think it's important. I didn't. I stayed. Uh, I stayed home all vacation, which was good. I did. Uh, it was good to do Christmas with a kid. Because yeah, you realize like, oh, this is why Christmas is fun. Did, did he did he understand anything different was happening or no? Yes. Well, like I stayed up. Oh, you know, because I mean, you don't really. You could do Christmas when he, when he, he's ten months old. You could do Christmas or not do Christmas. It doesn't matter. But you do it just for, for the, the pictures ceremony and, to and do the it. pictures and the thing. But yeah, yeah, yeah. We 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 got him a bunch of stuff. Some of the stuff has been sitting in our garage for a while, or like it was given to us by other people or whatever. But you just put new toys. In his room, and like I got him a giant ball that's like twice the size of him, just so you know it's it, he likes you know he can see it. Yeah, and so like he walked in on Christmas morning and recognized in his toy room was Different all these stuff. All yeah, these new toys, and so he freaked out. You know he freaks out at, at Sesame Street, so we got him like a little Elmo. He likes it. He likes that. He freaked out about that. But it's like you know, and we have a three-year-old niece, so watching the three-year-old and our little dude like. It made it, it made you realize how awkward it is to do Christmas when it's all just adults. Right. Like in that, in that period of time where you're all grown up, but nobody has kids yet. Like you're in your late twenties or sometimes early thirties. And like, you're still just kind of going and opening presents at your mom's house or Travis. A lot of people still do it at their mom's Yes. House. What is what is that word? Yeah, no, ma, it's like, it's it's the female version of dad. You picture, oh, picture yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or you're just sitting in the shoulder of the road in the parkway, <laughs> opening <laughs> gifts. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, like, it really, it really drives it home how, how you know, Christmas is, is a thing for For, for kids, children. For, for children. That's what that's what it's for. It's, it's, it's way better, though. And it's fun watching them uh, freak out over new shit and opening their stuff and, and do all that. Yeah. It was a good time. And then, other than that, I mean, I did some shows. Like, I did, uh, I did Legion of Skanks. Oh, how was that? That was fun. Yeah, we talked about Mary Jean. Oh my God, yes, I did. Lewis and Heard fought. They, did, yeah, people got on Twitter were like, "Why do you guys have her?" It was like her, her and Lewis had a fight, a physical, almost like a physical, and then she called in, and of course we're gonna talk. Like, what, the, what do you guys want? But I also like, I looked at Lewis. I was like, Lewis, I was like, you are not going to sit there and convince me. That you, Luis J. Gomez, are a guy who thinks that because there was conflict, this person should not be on the radio. You are the most conflict-seeking radio person of all time. I know Lewis stood up like he was ready for a fit, which again, <laughs> he, Lewis not gonna let anybody hit him. I, I don't, I don't blame Lewis for not wanting to be hit. But yeah. then don't get weird with people. Get weird with us if somebody fucking uh, calls up. And we want to talk about what happened. Of course, we want to talk about what happened. But it was fine. You know, I mean, I was, I was like doing that show, and then I yeah. did. Tom Shalou's show one day because he was on during that week oh, between he was. Christmas and New Year's. So I did that show. I did a bunch of shows from uh, for YouTube, you know, live shows. I from heard the you. Did, I saw your countdown. <laughs> yeah, I did the New Year's yes. show, New Year's Lonely Eve by myself. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. It was fun. I, yeah. I did you on, have callers? No. I mean, I don't have phones set up. So I, the only person. So I put on my tux, as you can see in the photo. I put on my tux, and I got. I went to Party City. Uh, earlier in the day, and I got, like, confetti poppers and New Year's hats and noisemakers and, like, signs to put up and everything, and then just went down at, like, 11.15 and did my own New Year's countdown. That's great. Just by myself talking. I just picked up the mic a couple of times, but I was talking to, like, the people in the YouTube chat and just doing it, but 
One of the funnier moments was I knew Kevin was going to marry Maria on New Year's. He, we, we had talked about it earlier, but it was like a surprise. And so I told him, I was like, well, I'm doing this thing. And he was like, well, I could try to get you into Times Square, but there's only like room for four people on the platform that we have. There's no space. I was like, don't, you know, I don't even, I don't need to be in Times Square yeah, for course. New Year's anyway. If you, I said, if you wanted me there as like a friend, I would be there. But if, if it's like you trying to do something cool for me, don't worry about it. I'll see you guys the next sure. day. And so that's what I did. But he called me when I was doing the show. So it's like 1130. And I'm sitting there with the TV on ready to talk about this marriage that's gonna happen on the YouTube show. And my cell phone rings and I put him on speaker and he's like, while I'm doing the YouTube show, he's like, hey Sam, just getting mic'd up, uh, getting ready to go, Bob. And he just called to check in on the show. And just to say hello while he's getting five ready to get minutes, married on live TV? Five minutes before he's marrying Maria Menounos in Times Square on live television. Kevin is a bit of a psycho. Like, once in a while, I'll, I'll wake up, and he's a, he is an idea guy. Oh, Kevin yeah. Kevin Undergaro is a fucking, um, that, you know, that, like, he really thinks of things and, and tries to make things work, and he's a really hard worker. So once in a while, I'll, I'll wake up to a bunch of texts with, with ideas. Yeah. And they're all good. And I'm like, you know, I, I didn't see that until the next morning. And like, yeah, he's he's a guy who's always thinking, man. Always, always. Well, he doesn't sleep. Like, he's in total insomnia. He is a fucking crazy person. Yeah. He's, he's up all night. Yeah, he's up all night. And like, I can always tell when he's been up all night because he just stays up all night listening to shows. Like, he puts his earbuds in and he goes to sleep like that just because he's all over the place and he doesn't he doesn't sleep much. So Maria will go to bed and he'll just probably sit in the next room? No, he'll, he'll well, <laughs> he developed a couple of things. He'll, some, she doesn't like when he comes in. In the middle of the night. Because it wakes her up. Right. So he goes to bed when she goes to bed. But he'll either have his laptop or just on his phone and just have his earbuds in and listening. Because she also didn't like the laptop being on. Sure. Because it kept her up. Yes. So he, I don't know if he still uses it, but he created this invention called the man curtain where it's a retractable, because he's also like, he used to work in, as a carny, so he knows how to build shit. You know, he's the one who built with the studio with me in the, in the, at my house. Right. And he built this contraption that's a retractable curtain where at nighttime he could put up a curtain between he and Maria so that he could be on his laptop and she can go to sleep. What is he flying business class? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like, there's this like, it's like PVC pipe that comes up from the end of the bed and then he stretches the curtain across and then he could do his stuff. He could do his work. He can type and then he puts the curtain down, but I think, I do think that Maria might have put the kibosh on that, too. You know, I wonder, because I, I understand the insomnia and how frustrating it is, and you're laying there and you can't sleep. It's, it sound, might sound like something basic, but are you drinking coffee too late? And is your phone, they say you're having your phone right by your head when you sleep is bad. Mm -hmm. Keep it across the room. So I've started, like, for the last two weeks keeping it across the room, and I notice in most cases I've slept a little bit better because it's just not right by your head. Right, it's not an option. Yeah, and don't be on the laptop right before. It, it's, it's hard to do, but I wonder if he's on his laptop too late. Oh, yeah, I mean, he's in bed. Doing all that stuff and thinking and so I think so does he sleep during the day when she gets up? He'll just stay in bed No, when no, are you kidding me? No way when she gets up he gets up like it's time to go to work Like he he produces everything she does like he's part of everything. So no, absolutely not You know at one point he was like, you know a couple years ago He had to he had to kind of change his life and stuff because he started they diagnosed him with adrenal fatigue just because he had been going and going and going and going. You know, adrenal so much. fatigue, I wonder, what is that? There's some of the uh, just constant exhaustion. I thought yeah. I had that at one point. So I went to a, like a Maybe. fucking organ. What did he take for it? Do you know? I don't know. He had a whole a whole thing. It was like over the course of years, but he'd be a good person to talk to about Yeah, that. that's interesting. But yeah, I mean, he, uh, uh, no, he goes fucking, he goes nuts. Non stop work. Yeah. Non stop work. But that, some guys are just like that. They need like a couple hours of, of uh, it's, but does he function well on three hours? He functions great. I mean, as far, I mean, I, I, I don't, he functions great when I work with him, so, and, I, you know, he doesn't sleep well, so, I think he functions great on Nothing on, worse than sitting there in bed and the person you're with is sleeping like a log, and you're like, what the fuck? How do they do that? Oh, it's the worst. Yeah, oh, must be nice. I don't know, I don't get frustrated about it anymore. I used to get frustrated when I was a kid because I couldn't sleep, so I had to, uh, I had to get past all that, because I would get, like, uh, anxiety about not yeah. sleeping. Yeah. And then you go into bed, it's a whole thing. Right. And so now I don't, I don't let sleep, like it's on my, it's like number 100 on my list of concerns. Like I don't even look at it as a thing anymore. Yeah, well you'll, you'll do it when you need to do it. Right. Just because otherwise I freak out. Yeah. And if you're tired, you're tired. Okay. Exactly. Like at I, some point your body will just shut down and you'll have to sleep or you'll die or something will yeah. happen. Yeah. It is what it is. But what just are you going to do? Constantly knowing that the bed is a place that you're going to struggle. Right. 
Sleep wise and sexually. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an enemy. Dude, the bed is my enemy. <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't do any 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 sleeping tricks anymore. If I'm tired, I'll fall asleep. If I'm not tired, I'm gonna watch TV. I'm gonna look at my phone. I don't I don't do any of it. Yeah, when you're looking at the phone though. Because otherwise it, otherwise it stresses me out. And and in, instead of, you know, all these tricks of falling asleep, I just get stressed out about yeah. the fact that I can't sleep. So I didn't do any of that stuff. I'll go to, downstairs and go live on YouTube or something. I mean, it doesn't That's kind of cool to be able to do that. Whatever. It was, and that's what I was really like uh, experimenting with over the vacation just because I can go on. I was like, wait, I could just go on whenever I want. So whenever stuff was going on or I just had an opinion about something, you just go on and, and, and put the chat on live and people signed on and it's super fun. And you fun. tweet and say, this is what I'm doing? Yeah, yeah. You just tweet like right, I tweet right before I'm going on. Hey, I'm going to go on YouTube. And then I just, Sign on to the YouTube channel. And do you discuss what they're to like? Well, you'll talk with the people when they're. I'll have uh, uh, my topics. Like, there's a. Or, or like, I, I'm doing the show. Like, it's not like. It's not. Because it's. You know, if you're going to build that whole studio and everything, it's you like. You have to have a show you're going to do. It's like a show. Like, it's not yeah. just me on my phone, like, talking to the commenter. Like so idiot. I'm like. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, I'm actually. No, I'm doing a show. There's a purpose sure. to the show. Yeah. You're, you're actually. You're setting up where you want to discuss something. Right. And then, like, you know, every now and then I'll glance over at the screen and look at the comments, address, go back to the topic at hand. But I try to move the comments towards the topic, the reason for the show. It's not just, hey, I'm just going to look at my phone and read comments. Like, that's not a show. I enjoy, I enjoy, I, you know, a lot of times if I've gone on, on Facebook Live and stuff, I've, t I've talked to people who are commenting in. It's a way, like, they're asking questions. Like, I don't mind answering questions Right, like that's that. a, that's a, I mean. I kind of like doing that. I like that, too. That's a different thing. As well, but I think that that's... But having a show or having an idea of what you want to do is smart. Yeah, I just write out, like, you know, especially when we're not on the air and there's stuff going on. I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, I want to talk about this, that, and this. And I just go down and and, and then kind of just see what happens, just like when we do the show here. Yeah, it's like, all right, let's see. It's, it's kind of planned. We have news stories, a bunch of stuff and videos. We know we talk about our vacations and what we did. And, yeah. You know, yeah. But I thought of it the whole time I was there, like, all right, I'll talk about this. We... Yeah. This happened, that happened. Make part of it, part of the reason is you're doing stuff too because you know you're going to have to come and talk about it on the air. Right. So why don't you just say, I mean, I could have come back sooner, but I'm like, for, like, for what? Just to go to the, like, I mean, I love the cellar and I love these other places. Why don't I come back and just do a few sets that I could do anytime? Right. No, just you're stay right. in Paris, you fruit. Yeah. Yeah. A lovely city, lovely people. I was completely wrong about Europe. Completely. It's amazing. I was. I, I think everybody kind of knew you were going to be wrong, though. Nobody was like, "Yeah, Jim's right." No, <laughs> you know? I know, but I mean, it's I don't like, think. Were you, Travis? No. Like there was. Not. You didn't think there was any merit to his argument, right? No, there's a okay. Disneyland there. How can it be bad? Right, that's true. I saw the Disney store in Charles de Gaulle Airport. I would have gone there. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. Did you go to Disneyland? No. So where what's the where point is of it? going? It's in Paris. Oh, why go? No, Euro I Disney. It's not called Euro Disney anymore. No, is it's it? Disneyland Paris. Mm. <laughs> oh, so excuse me. <laughs> I didn't go to any dirty places either. Wow. There's, there's a weird sex district that I walked through just to look like a you know ten blocks of like sex. But it, I didn't even did I go to any of the stores. No, I think I just ate when I was down there. You just wow. looked around. It was like kind of like Times Square was, but nowhere near as dirty. That's pretty incredible. Everybody was just kind of like normal looking around, and it didn't feel dirty. Yeah. I walked by um, the good. Moulin Rouge. Voulez-vous coucher avec moi? Oh. <laughs> I fucking hate that song. <laughs> I fucking hate it. What about the, what about the, what about Who the- Who sings that? What about the redo? The, uh, uh- Dude, I hate it. With Christina Aguilera? I fucking hate and it. And Pink is in it? I'd rather listen to the sound of water crashing into my Sabbath photo <laughs> than that fucking song. <laughs> well, you know, Lil' Kim- Yeah, oh yeah, and, 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 and the Queen Bee, Lil' Kim is in it, and, and Maya- Maya's still relevant, right? Maya's still got hits, right? Nah. Troy, you ever play Maya when you're in the... Yeah, she fell off, man. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. But this was big. Moulin Rouge was... Uh, we... Oh, yeah, and Missy Elliott is there to introduce us. Remember, she goes, Christina. Were you singing this when you were passing by the Moulin Rouge? So cool. I... I hate this song. Why? <laughs> There's Maya. She still got it. She's, she's hot. Oh, she was. She was done. Yeah. What year is this song? 99, maybe? Since 2002. 2002, okay. Ah. Uh, 
Gitchy, gitchy, ya, ya. It's sexy, Jim. I hate gitchy, you, gitchy, ya, ya, ya. Do you know what voulez-vous coucher, avez wa 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 means? Yes, kill yourself. Oh. <laughs> gitchy, gitchy, ya, ya. That's, I hate this song. You do? Hate. Why? Because it's baby talk? <laughs> Fucking gitchy, gitchy, ya, ya, ya. Ah, oh, whatever it is. Oh, there's Sticks. Pink and Lil' Kim. Christina, all the ladies of the moment coming together. I fucking hate it. Pink is still making songs now, huh? Yeah, she's still around. This is a tour de force. This was a tour de force. That's the correct terminology for it. How many people you think sing, hum this to themselves as they're walking by the Moulin Rouge going, Oh, gitchy, gitchy, yeah, yeah, da, Well, there's da. Jim. I don't know. <laughs> Nor do I care. I forgot about this song. Did you say did you, you didn't think about that when you walked by the Moulin no, Rouge? No, I'm just like, oh yeah, there's a movie about that. Yeah, Gitchy Gitchy Ya Ya Da Da. Didn't think of that. No, you didn't. Thank God I did. It would have ruined my trip. Oh. But I knew I walked by the Moulin Rouge and there was something about it that I hated. <laughs> <laughs> I feel an overwhelming <laughs> negative presence as I walk past this building. I just didn't want to go into it. Oh, I know it's a very famous place. What about when little Kim gets a little street? She's talking about spending her man's money. I like Lil' Kim. See? Yeah. Hello, Kim. I, I enjoy. I like her voice. I, I, she's great. She's still doing the thing, right, Troy? You know what's funny is she has a song out now with uh, what's her name, uh, Remy Ma, and I'm like, oh. wow, two completely irrelevant. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Early 2000s rappers that are. Yeah, because we monitored last year Remy Ma bodying uh, Nicki Minaj, but who would have thought both of them would fall by the wayside because Cardi B is that hot shit, right? And Lil Kim is white now. That's right, Lil Kim is. She's uh, her and Sammy Sosa. Oh, yeah, she's got the Sammy Sosa thing going on, where she's like completely white and and has no resemblance to that person in the Moulin Rouge video. Christina was hot. Yeah, she was. She probably wants to remove the memories of this song. Who does? Lil Kim. So she became white. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I can't be that person. I cannot do that anymore. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, oh, I like the name of the song. The name, the name of the, uh, who's Lady Marmalade? Marmalade. Oh. That's the name of the song. Lady oh. Marmalade. Damn. It's from the, oh, from the hit movie, Moulin Rouge. That gitchy, was... gitchy. <laughs> oh, I fucking hate it. Yeah. Baz Luhrmann was like, hey, man, I need a song to go with my movie. And the girls were like, we got you, Baz. We got you. What was that big song he did, the, the one, Baz Luhrmann's, uh... The talk song. Do you remember the song? I'm not sure. But you know the song when you hear it. Gitchy, gitchy, ya, ya, da, da. It's a, a fucking terrible. Sunscreen? Hmm. You know the song. Everybody's free to wear sunscreen? That might be it. That sounds familiar. Oh, shit. Oh, oh yeah. Sounds like the other song. Troy. No. Sunscreen. Turn your iPod off. My bad. And just the computer. One tip Just zip in the head of oh, Never mind. He will not understand the power and beauty of it. It sucks. Do you remember I it? I, I remember, I, I remember it being a thing, but I don't have any you look back recollection of the actual song. Recall in a way you can't grasp now how much possibility lay before you and how fabulous I don't like really Baz Luhrmann. No, I don't care about him either way. But I, I just remember this. I, I didn't care about the Romeo and Juliet movie. Moulin Rouge sucked. What else did he do? He did one uh, one kind of recently, didn't he? This song sucks. Great Gatsby? Uh, you don't great, like this song? Great Gatsby was great. This is a song? This sucks. I've never heard this before. He had to do a whole bunch this was, of... This was huge. Yeah, I yeah. totally have never heard this before. He had to do a whole bunch of kidding? garbage no. before he got to Great Gatsby. Did you see Great Gatsby? No. It was good. You've heard this, Troy. Yeah. But then again, Leonardo DiCaprio was in it. So, of course it's good. He's the fucking man. Yeah. yeah. Leo was in Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, yeah but he that. wasn't the man then. That's when he was like uh, frilly, uh, frilly boy uh, Titanic Leo. True. He was still the man. He wasn't the man then. No, he was no. Gilbert Grape. No, he wasn't the man. In and the fucking come on, I know a thing or two about a thing or two. No, he this wasn't, boy's he wasn't life. the man then. No, he was basically Leonardo. Uh, uh, he was basically Jonathan Taylor Thomas then. Yeah. No, catch me if you can. That's when. It That's turns. when he became the man. Yeah. That's a great. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you guys are crazy. He was great in this boy's life. Yeah, well, but he wasn't. Is there a mustard man. in that jar? He was a little boy, though. Yeah, exactly. Still, he's still cool. But he wouldn't know. <laughs> he's a little kid, man. But he was a good actor. He was great. Basketball Diaries, he was great. And he no, was a great yeah, young actor. I'm not saying he was a bad young actor, but I am saying he wasn't the man. 
Uh, nah. but dudes like, weren't like, oh, that dude's the that fucking dude's the man. fucking man. That's now, the fucking like, dude. Oh, yeah. No, I don't think about him as the man now. He is. I, yeah, I just think he's he a great actor. No, he's the dude. Catch Me If You Can was so good. So fucking good. Catch Me If You Can is one of my favorite movies. Tom yeah. Hanks is like looking at that bottle. The label's been peeled off. He's like, epic nail! <laughs> <laughs> knock, knock. Knock, knock. 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 <laughs> hey, how's your wife? Is she uh, good? They had this stupid Hannibal lecter Jody Foster relationship. That's such you, a great fucking movie. You've yeah. got no one else to call. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! I fell down the steps. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one where he's like, "Hey, Francis, I put your watch in my asshole." <laughs> right? Oh, it's. I thought of that. Um, the, the walk-in. I Bob introduced me to him at the Christmas party. Um, you, you are a true uh, piece of shit. You well, I never a, talked about that. What? I'm, you're a piece of garbage. Why? Because there's just no reason to bring that up. It wasn't casual. I totally forgot about it. Yeah, me oh, too. I'm oh, sorry. Actually, I hadn't forgotten about it. I was talking to somebody about you the other day. It might have been Kevin at his uh, wedding thing. I was like, yeah. I go, now he's doing, he's doing, he's going to the, the, the De Niro party. He's meeting Christopher Walken. What's wrong with that? If a guy, if a guy says, you want to come to my family's Christmas party, you go. Do you? What, are you not going to? Yes. Well, I invited you to Thanksgiving. You didn't come. It's busy. <laughs> Hope Bob would call. <laughs> He's sitting there chatting, and then Chris Walken comes over and he introduces you. What are you going to do? Not say hello? The Robert, you went to the Robert De Niro family Christmas party. Yeah. So who didn't? I didn't. I wasn't invited. I thought uh, you were getting us a plus four. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But anyway, Chris came over and he introduced me. Hey, how you doing? Christopher Walken. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I have the. Uh, because I don't think we ever really talked about this. You I, sent me the most annoying. It might be the most annoying text I've ever gotten. Let me see if I can find it here because it was uh, it was before break. Just yeah, just don't put the uh, location or date. No, 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 I don't no, know no. how much of that stuff he makes public. No, it was just your. Uh, your I mean, we talk so much. I have to scroll up a little bit. Um, it's not something to brag about. Let's see. Uh, uh, there was one moment where I was at the fucking uh, at the Christmas party that I was going to leave. You know, I was leaving was there, and I'm standing there and I'm saying goodbye to him. And Harvey Keitel is sitting there. And some girl gets a picture with Keitel, and she wants one with De Niro and Keitel. So I'm standing there with uh, him just talking, and he grabs me just to be in the, <laughs> the picture. So I fucking photobomb someone. <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't mean to. It was some girl's photo with De Niro and Keitel that I'm in it. And I don't have it. I don't know who it is. So this was a text I got a couple, a couple weeks ago. You were asking me if I was doing the chip show. I was like, yeah, I should be able to make it, blah, blah, blah. And then you just sent me this text, which I thought was weird. Because you normally don't just vent, but I was like, oh, I on it, you got me. I honestly was like, oh, maybe Jim's having like kind of a rough day. Like, I'll be here for him as a friend. I had such an annoying day today. I can't talk about it uh, until I get back from Europe uh, because I wound up, uh, because it wound up being so annoying. And I go, really? Question mark, question mark, question mark. What happened? Question mark. And this is, I knew immediately. He goes, I'm in the middle of talking to Bob, and fucking Chris comes over, so Bob introduces me to Chris. <laughs> <laughs> and I just sat there staring at the text, and I was like, well, I know who Bob is. I was like, oh, it's not, oh. And so my response was, an ellipses, dot, 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 Chris who? And I just get a text back that says, Walk in. Oh, I just thought you knew. <laughs> What's annoying about that? <laughs> exactly, nothing. Then why did you say you had an annoying day? Oh, just you're talking to one person and somebody else comes in. Oh, I see. I see. But yeah, anyway, Catch Me If You Can is a fucking great... Well, yeah, I mean, you probably watch it differently because you know the guy. But I just, you know, Catch <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's just a different it, thing. It is, it is one of my favorite movies, too, I think. It's so good. It's so fucking good. And I love the fact that they're both still alive. You mean uh, uh, the, the, real, the, real the real guys? People. Yeah, the real Avignale. And uh, I think that sometimes when I fly, how difficult, how different it was back then to be able just to get, get on a flight. You're not even a cat, but like the bullshit you could get away with in 1968. If you were a flirt and could stick uh, airplane, uh, toy airplane stickers on a check. Yeah. Escape yeah. through a toilet. What's it? Yeah. What's yeah. His, uh, what, what, what's the name of the, of the, per, what, what, the pilot that sits uh, without flying the plane? Oh, Deadhead. Are you my Deadhead? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm your deadhead. Yeah, and because there's no way for them to check on a computer. No, and he's just fucking stewardesses. Come yeah. glass of milk. How funny! <laughs> how funny would it have been if when they said, "Are you my deadhead?" He started singing "Touch of Grey." It's a Grateful Dead song, right, Troy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I thought so. Do you like that? That's, that's the, the Deadheads. Like that's like I the, knew, the Dead's I, big song. I knew where you were going. Yeah, it's like their hit. I, I, yeah. I, I love that everyone hates that song, and it's great. <laughs> it's like the one, the, the one. Yeah. Oh my god.